would like to have Senator Reid go first. Well, I thank the chairwoman for her graciousness, and thank you all for your excellent testimony. And I can tell you the same story you, you just told us. In Providence, Rhode Island, the uh, average rents have jumped 23.8% uh, in the previous year. That's extraordinary. Uh, we're running out of our emergency rental assistance funds. Uh, the emergency shelters are closing down. Our frontline staff, as you well know, is really burning out after the pandemic. Uh, and that's why it's essential, I think, that we increase funding for the homelessness assistance grants. And uh, that would include the continuum of care program, which serves over 750,000 people, and also the emergency solutions grants, uh, serving another approximately 350,000. Uh, so, Ms. Oliva, are, are there, uh, why are federal resources like homelessness assistance grants essential to combating homelessness, particularly as the pandemic-specific programs begin to wind down? Thank you so much, Senator Reid, for that question. As you might remember, I actually ran those programs at HUD for, for about 10 years, so they're, mm -hmm. they're near and dear to my, to my heart. Uh, you know, those programs uh, through, that are funded through the Homeless Assistance Grants count, and uh, I would also count HUD-VASH in that sort of general group of homelessness-specific programs, really form the backbone of our homelessness response in this country. And uh, in a lot of communities, not all communities, but in a lot of communities, they are most of the funding that is uh, available for homeless assistance programs. So increasing resources in the Continuum of Care program and through the ESG program and HUD-BASH are sort of the, the, the backbone and the lifeline for many communities and their response to homelessness. It also creates um, a way for HUD to be able to um, put forth promising practice practices and evidence-based approaches and prioritize funding for those types of resources. Uh, since we're talking about the Continuum of Care program, I would note three things. Uh, first is, thank you so much for uh, the legislation that allows tribes to receive and uh, be eligible for uh, the Continuum of Care program. It's incredibly important. There are some issues related to implementation that we're all working out right now, but it was incredibly important. Two, uh, in HUD's uh, last budget request, they asked for, for two tools that I think are gonna be really important in addition to uh, an increase in, in the funding for those programs. One is increasing the cap on planning for continuums of care. That's really important because uh, continuums of care are really the subject matter experts. And as funding is coming into communities that, that goes through other types of um, uh, sort of mechanisms, it's important for COCs to have planning dollars to work with them. Uh, they also mentioned wanting a two-year NOFA cycle, and we would support that. The National Alliance supports that, um, in part for some of the reasons that Ranking Member Rounds mentioned. Uh, local COCs need some time to be able to do implementation, and having a two-year funding cycle would be really helpful there. The last thing that I would note that was raised by, by um, one of my colleagues up here on the panel is around staffing and increasing... Uh, the COC program requires increases in fair market rents and uh, leasing amounts that, that are commensurate with what's happening in the community. Uh, I would say we need to do the same for staffing so that uh, providers are properly resourced and can provide their staff with cost of living increases when, when they need to. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me just shift quickly, because you mentioned HUD-VASH uh, to... Uh, your colleague, Ms. Manet, I think. Uh, one of the things I've observed, is, first of all, HUD-VASH program is extremely useful. Uh, but there are many areas where the vouchers are going underutilized. Is that an issue you've identified? And can you give us some insights why they're being underutilized? Absolutely. I think that there are a number of issues to unpack there, from a lack of staffing at VA for case managers to a rental market that may not be as willing to accept vouchers I think we hear from communities across the country that it is just getting harder and harder to move veterans with vouchers into permanent housing. And I think even for some of the veterans that already have vouchers to retain the housing they have because the housing market is just so hot and landlords can move on to other higher paying clientele. And so 
I do think that we need to get creative around how we can incentivize landlords and PHAs to get vouchers out the door, but also how we support VA to better case manage folks who are utilizing vouchers and how we can give them some flexibility there. Thank you very much, Ms. McGinnery. Thank you for your efforts. My time has expired, but I want to thank all the panelists for your not only thoughtful uh, testimony today, but for your incredible efforts. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Reid.